Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, today uh, we are going to study about lecture number three. In this topic, uh, we will cover meanings and spirit of Islamic administration, fundamental principles of Islamic administration, and the third point that is dynamics of Islamic model. The other one is the structure of Islamic model. and also the duties of islamic administrator so we will discuss all about these five main points first of all we discuss that what is the meaning and spirit of islamic administration as we know that the holy quran is the real basis of islamic life because we get all rules and regulations from our islam because everything is defined over there and its actual legislation is very limited muslims they are free to legislate as needs arise in the spirit of social justice the few laws in the holy quran are often permissive and give large latitudes to suit any change in circumstances kamaruddin khan who was uh, who is a professor of islamic history uh, that is from karachi university is of the opinion that the holy quran does not aim to create a state but to create a society so whatever clearly stated laws given by allah and his messenger about life and society we all know that everything that is uh, given by allah through his messengers hazrat muhammad sallam who has clearly defined each and everything to the muslims and for the whole world no one is allowed to deviate from them even by a hair's breadth calling the prophet muhammad sallam the ideal philosopher we can say king who surpasses in both theory and practice the qualities which plato sought in his ideals are found from the famous hadith of the prophet muhammad sallam as the founder and theoreticians of administration of islamic state had a unique positions as its executive head in fact he was a legislator means through divine revelation as well as personal pronouncements and practice all of which acquired a sacred character for the muslims executives as well as a jurist moreover in the meaning and spirit of islamic administration we can define that he was not answerable to any one as far as the revealed commands were concerned but in the absence of divine revelations it was his want to consult his companions in fact he was commanded by allah to do so the holy quran commands the prophet and consults them that is those around you in important matters moreover we can also say that uh, the two essentials and primary ingredients of islamic administration theory are the umma and sharia these concepts are clearly elaborated in the holy quran prophet muhammad sallam was himself the focal point of these two concepts with the death of prophet the prophecy came to an end thus there was created a gap between the sharia and the umma the new link 
which was created by the ijma of the community in the form of the institutions of the khalifa which constitutes the third element of islamic political theory the fourth element would be the concept of darul islam and the muslim living therein now the question arises that islam favors the theocracy or democracy administrative setup maulana modudi says the islamic theocracy does not mean a rule by any priestly class but it means common muslims wielding reign of power but the muslims have to wield this power in keeping with the book of allah and sunnah of his prophet modudi prefers to call the islamic form of government as theodemocracy in this form of government muslims have been allowed a limited popular sovereignty under the paramountcy of allah for knowing the islamic concept of administration the islamic state in medina is the great example to turn to if one is to resolve the various problems of the modern islamic world according to this view the islamic state in medina was governed pursuant to the divine precepts of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam take an example to the following quotations from imam khomeini the most noble messengers peace and blessing be upon him headed the executive and administrative institutions of muslim society in addition to the conveying revelation and expounding and interpreting the articles of faith and the ordinances and institutions of islam he undertook the implementation of law and the establishment of the ordinance of islam thereby bringing into the brain the islamic state he did not content himself with the promulgation of the law rather he implemented it at the same time cutting off hands and administering lashing and stoning after the noblest messenger his successor had the same duty and function overall to know uh, the islamic concept of administration a letter of hazrat umar the second caliph of islam wrote to the governor of kufa abu musa ashari on the principle of justice he wrote administration of justice is a necessary duty so treat people equally be it in private audience of public sitting in matter of justice so that the weak should not despair of your justice and the strong should not hope for favor so it is for the plaintiff to produce proof and it is for the defendant to deny on oath compromise is permissible provided it doesn't violate what has been permitted or prohibited means by sharia so if you have passed any judgment yesterday so there would be nothing wrong in reversing it today on second thought in the interest of justice if it is not there in the quran or hadith contemplate over it deeply taking into account examples similar cases and drawing analogies fix a time limit for the plaintiff to produce proof justice be done to him if the produces proof or else his case be demised then the other point that is fundamental principle of islamic administration now what are the fundamental principles 
an islamic administration this is having a base on the sovereignty of allah so according to islamic constitutional theory absolute sovereignty over the entire universe belongs to allah but sin sign man has been appointed allah representative means khalifa on earth earthly sovereignty vests in him as a sacred trust from allah so muslim administrators must follow the following principles for governing the state which is known as islam so these principles were like uh, the first principle was the islamic administration will preserve and defend the law of allah derived from quran and sunnah the second principle is the ijma of the past is not binding upon the people all state functioners have to dedicate themselves to defending the divine law the head of the state should always be a muslim all subjects rather it is related to the muslims or non muslims shall be granted guaranteed equal civil rights men and women shall enjoy the same fundamental rights so women can hold property in their own name the other principle means the fifth principle that is the chief executive will be elected by the people and governed through consultations and the sixth principle is islam seeks to set up a just society and therefore attaches the highest importance to justice equity and fair dealing so two important constitutional principles are founded on this the first one is that everyone is equal before the law and enjoys equal opportunities and the second one is that in an islamic state even the head of the state can be sought not only as private individuals but also in respect of his public acts the seventh principle that is non muslims will be guaranteed full protection of life property and liberty in lieu of a reasonable protections tax or jizya now only a democratic form of government is prescribed by islam the quran states and those who respond to their lord and keep up prayers and their rules is to take counsel among themselves the quran instructs even the prophet to seek advice therefore forgive and ask pardon for them and consult them in the affair the ninth principle that is the state should maintain an equitable distribution of wealth concentrations of wealth in a few hands should not be allowed the 10th principle that is the state would uh, the state should strive to achieve equality of human beings adequate opportunities should be provided for employment education and other welfare benefits so maximum freedom should be available to the citizens the quran offers the following fundamental rights to the citizens of an islamic state which must be observed by muslim administrator the first one is equality of all citizens before the law as well as equality of status and opportunity the second one is freedom of religion everyone is free regarding their religions the right to life there is a right of every person to live according to his own way the right to property if the person has right if a person has its own right or own property then he or she has a right for that property no one is to suffer for the wrong of others freedom of persons freedom of opinions like everybody is free whatever they think 
freedom of movement even one can move toward any place where they want freedom of associations where they want to have associations with others so they have freedoms the right to privacy everybody must have their right on privacy what they do or do not the right to secure basic necessities of life the right to reputation the right to a hearing the right to the decisions in accordance with the proper judicial procedures the 12th one is last but not least comes to the concept of accountability authority or power to rule according to islam is a trust amanat of the people and not the birth right to everyone so the concept of trust automatically brings in that of accountability because a trustee is in law liable to a court under the islamic system this liability extends to rendering account not only to the people who appoint him but also to allah as it is the also quranic injunction then the other one is in the next point that was dynamics of islamic model the islamic concept of polity cannot be disengaged from the certain conceptions of society which islam upheld the islamic state is a culmination of a great social process of shift from polytheism to monotheism polytheism means when we uh, believe on many gods and monotheism means when we believe on one god so from rules by customs to rule by law from nature relationships based on blood analogies to it to a moral and spiritual associations from natural monarchy to power delegated by allah in arabic terminology it meant a movement away from shirk to tauhid from jahiliya to sharia from asabiya to taqwa and from mulk to waliya for an orthodox muslim society history was the process by which the society of religious ignorance directed to worldly ends held together by natural solidarity and ruled by kings was replaced by the ideal muslim society the central issues was however the embodiment of the will of allah as revealed in quran and history society and state now what was the structure of islamic model in structure it includes sovereignty of allah the sunnah and hadith ijtihad and ijma first of all we see that what is meant by sovereignty of allah in an islamic state sovereignty belongs unto allah this means that the injections given in the quran will be the only source for driving the legal and constitutional formula of the state an islamic state can neither be a monarch nor theocracy nor a secular democracy it is based on controlled democracy which means which means that the quranic injunctions form the absolute unalterable supreme law of the land and the people exercise their freedoms within the limits imposed by the quran the second one is the sunna and hadith it is called the tradition of the prophet is the second and undoubtedly a secondary source from which the islamic law are drawn sunna literally means a way rule or manner of acting in its original sense therefore sunna indicates the doings and hadith the saying of holy prophet peace be upon him 
but in effect both cover same ground and are applicable to his actions practices and sayings hadith being the narrations and uh, record of the sunna but containing in addition various prophetical and historical elements of islam as the holy quran generally deals with the broad principles of or essential of islam the details are generally to be supplied by the sunna of the holy prophet the third point is that is ijtihad while keeping in view the typical conventional beliefs about the sharia being a complete code of life asserted in 1961 augs forcefully for greater scope for free legislation he asserts that the actual sharia includes a small number of laws based on the quran sunna the rest are laws resulting from the ijtihad of every age such laws based on the independent reasoning of earlier muslim scholars they have no sacrosanct value and can therefore be changed and replaced so every generation has the right to exercise ijtihad in the temporal areas so ijtihad is the third source from which the laws are drawn one of the hadith says that on being appointed governor of yemen mohd bin jabbal was asked by the holy prophet as the rule by which he would adju- uh, adjudicate he replied by the law of quran but if you do not find any direction in the quran so how would you decide asked the prophet he replied i will apply the hadith and sunna but if you do not find any guidance in the hadith as well so he was again asked i will then exercise my judgment and act on that came the reply the prophet raised his hands and said praise to be allah who guides his messengers as he pleases so this hadith shows not only that the holy prophet approved of the exercise of judgment but also that his companions were well aware of the principles and that ijtihad was freely restored by the uh, followers when necessary so even in the prophet lifetime in ijma this is the fourth one the four source of islamic law this is ijma so which carries the double significance of composing and settling a thing which has been unsettled and hence determining and resolving upon an affair and of agreeing on uniting in opinions so in the terminology of the muslim jurist ijma means a consensus of the mujtahids or the agreements of the muslim jurist of a particular age on a point of law so ijma however is not an independent source of law it is only ijtihad on the wider basis and like ijtihad it is always open to revision then uh, the next point is duties of islamic administrator definitely whenever uh, there is administrator so always they have certain type of duties so what are those duties like an administrator of islamic state must keep in view and be the follower of above discussed source of law he must also possess the following duties the first one is dispensation of justice and disposal of all legislations uh, litigations in accordance with the sharia and thus putting the strong and weak on the same pedestal the second one is maintenance of law in order to make it possible for the people to lead peaceful life and proceed in their economic activities freely and travel in the land without fear the third one is enforcement of the criminal code of quran so that people do not violate the prohibitions of allah this is in fact is subsumed in the first duty itself to enforce sharia the fourth one is defense of the frontiers against foreign invasions to guarantee the security of life and property to muslims and non-muslims both in the islamic state organization and 
prosecutions of religious war against those who oppose the call of islam or refuse to enter the protection of the islamic state as non muslim subject as the leader is bound by the covenant of allah to establish the supremacy of islam over all other religions and faiths okay dears this was uh, all about uh, uh, the points whatever we have explained or discussed before so uh, if you want to study uh, all this material in urdu so i have given the links in description below so you can find out uh, uh, the same material from there and uh, also uh, the material related to b8 is also available so you can find in the descriptions also so if you like this video then like it and subscribe my channel for more updates thank you take care allah hafiz